Namaste guys. So um, I'm going to create a really special project and I'm going to be using this little book and this is in, indeed a really teeny tiny book and it's hard bound and that's the reason why I chose it. Initially I really liked it for the blue but then um, over a period of time my thoughts about the project changed so um, I've decided to paint this and I'm just going to quickly dive into that. So a little bit about the book. This is a book on uh, friendship by Ruskin Bond. He's an Indian writer and he's quite famous. So um, <clears throat> it, it wasn't a very expensive book for me to destroy. So um, and of course the book is always going to stay with me because it's going to be a decor piece. So a little bit of what I've already done. I've inked around the edges of all the pages and I split the book down to the very middle like so and I have really um, forced the book to stay open and I have cracked it a little bit so it's easy for me to um, um, uh, alter this because uh, this is how I want the book to be and um, very quickly I'm just going to get started with the painting so I'm just going to quickly and I'm going to fast forward this bit painting my book and it's fairly dry and you can see it looks amazing so um, now I'm going to grab a little bit of um, modeling paste and my paint again and I'm going to mix these two together till they are fairly mixed and this looks like chocolate doesn't it I think I'm happy with that much and I got some on my finger. I'm just grabbing um, a stencil. It's uh, it's by Tim Holtz and I'm uh, the one that I have here is uh, the crackle, the one called crackle. And I'm just going to position it from the spine like so and I'm just going to start adding my modeling paste and my paint mixture. I'm just going to do one single really light coat. modeling paste is fairly dry and it looks really grungy so I'm just going to grab a distressing tool and I'm going to grab some of my Inca gold and I'm just going to in circular motions just going to add some color and texture on there I 
um, you'll see I've used the Inca gold to accent most of the little pieces that are there in the in the project so it will tie everything together And I like the fact that it dries fairly quickly. Don't really have to um, sit around and wait for it or leave it aside. And I'm going to do that on the spine as well. I already did my back. So. And you can see bits and pieces are falling off, but that doesn't really bother me. blend as much as I can and I want to go over the edges I did add modeling paste to my edges as well just to give them some interest Okay, so moving on to the next part of our construction. I have a little box here and this measures 5 by 5. I made this out of chipper and it's a simple box. It's wrapped all the way around and I did go and paint the sides with Inca gold and I have my pattern paper on two sides. So this is the base of our little room box that the book is going to sit on. So we're going to finish uh, tiling this and let me just grab my flow tiles. I've taken a little piece of cardstock that also measures 5 by 5 and I went and embossed it, uh, made some emboss lines using my scoreboard at 1 inch. So those gave me my grout and you can see I added uh, some more Inca gold to uh, fill up my grouts. And these little tiles that you see here are actually um, pieces of the pattern paper that are cut to 1 16th less than 1 inch both ways. And then I added glossy accent on them. And you can see they look really like tiles. And I'll just add the rest of them in. See, this is how they look. So I have these three left and I need to add them on here if only my glue would work. And 
just need to and since it's got glossy accent and I'm not really sure if it's dried up I am using my little dauber here to press it down so that I don't get any of my fingerprints on there it doesn't really matter if I get some of the distress distress ink on it it will just add to the look so this is representing the check it float tiles and if you've not already guessed I'm creating a little miniature scene from Alice in Wonderland which happens to be one of my favorite books so that's that one and then last but not the least So that completes my my floor. And since this is a craft sheet, I can just do that. And I think it'll be probably best if I use tacky tape to add this to the box here. So I'm just gonna grab my, I'll use the one inch. And since I want a really good adherence, I'm going to add tacky tape to the entire back of this piece. I'm using tacky tape because uh, since I've used the tiles and the tiles are not exactly flat it's added a bit of texture and curve to my cardstock and I want it to be completely flat on my project so I think I'll just throw that there and I'll probably add a few strips on this it will also add a little bit of a body to the base make it heavier so take this off And since it's checkered, it doesn't uh, really have um, a particular way I want it to be, but I can still choose and probably I'll be using <coughs> the side as my front. So I'm just add my tiles and again it's best to probably just do that and there you have it you have your flow tiles on there is that pretty neat okay so um, I have these two pieces and these are going to be the backs and I have <coughs> excuse me couple of more tiles that I want uh, going around the front <coughs> sorry about that and let me quickly grab my tiles and I'm going to continue with the same checkered pattern and I'm going to add the dark one here and then the light and so on and so forth So I have my uh, 
tiles on there and I think it looks really authentic it looks amazing so these two are my front uh, the frontage and uh, <coughs> and I have these two going on the back and then this is the surface that the book is going to rest on and I'm gonna just uh, leave that aside to dry for some more time and I haven't given much thought about the grouting if I want to do a little bit more but as of now I'm, I'm really happy with the way it uh, looks at this point so I'm going to grab my book again and uh, like I said before I found my middle and I really squashed it and I opened it so the book knew uh, where to open and lay relatively flat so uh, for this step I think uh, I'm just going to be grabbing a little box and uh, it's just a little uh, wooden tea box and I have done that to um, to find my right angle if you understand what I mean so I'm just going to grab some Mod Podge and this happens to be a brand new bottle so anyways I'm just going to keep my um, my book as angled as angled as I can I want it to be a perfect 90 degree and I'm just going to add Mod Podge to the sides of my pages And this is just to seal them in and turn them into a block. Essentially, um, these are going to create the walls of our little miniature scene. And you can see it's making the, the distress ink bleed a little. But then that's okay. I'll probably go back in and distress them some more and it's really adding some cool um, effects to the pages to the back so I'm just going to slide this back down and I'm going to Moving on to the side. You can see it's doing really fun things to the edges. I'm doing the edges of the pages first because um, I want that angle to be permanent and now again I'm going back a second time over my edges
just going to add a bit of texture to my pages and it seems to be stuck That's relatively um, angled and uh, I'm going to just try and very carefully open this up and now I know that my pages are stuck at the right angle so I'm going to just use my box here and, and I'm going to go back and add Mod Podge to the back cover. generous amount and then on my pages as well And I'm just going to bring these two together. Okay, so that side is done and I'm just trying to squeeze out any excess that's coming off and I'm just, while it's still a little wet, I'm going to just add some. to my corner pages so you can see it's almost um, almost already falling into shape it's nearly there so I'm gonna move on to the other side now so same fashion I'm going to add more Mod Podge to the base first Just going to bring the two together.
so my book is drying and uh, I'm moving on to the next phase to uh, make the book look like it was actually Alice in Wonderland I printed out uh, I scanned and print, printed uh, one of my books and uh, here are the pages so uh, these are going to be the, the top page and I cut some wallpaper from the pattern paper I'm using the collection tales of you and me and I'm using the 6x6 stack and I have to tell you these are just beautifully beautiful papers I just love them and you do see that I am running a little um, short on the pattern paper since my book is about six and a half but I will have a molding there so that doesn't really bother me and I have them cut to size and I'm leaving my um, the center if you can see that I'm leaving a little bit on the fold there so um, I've taken some resin frames to uh, embellish this project and I've taken the largest one and this is going to be my door frame I sawed off the bottom bit and this is going to be my door and I just need to center all of this and I'm going to trace my um, I'm going to trace the inside of my door onto that paper so and I just want um, I'm going to be just cutting two sides so I have that there and uh, this is just going to be my guide to cut out a little bit of a panel uh, on my pattern paper to um, for it to show through. So I'm just using a pair of scissors. now we are just going to fold this back onto itself like so so you'll have a bit of your the bottom page showing through and I won't really have the door going all the way but uh, let's see if the frame fits on the door it does so I can little take a little bit more off since my frame is a bit dimensional just a smidge okay so before I um, finally stick these down the only thing I really need to do is I'm going to crunchy them up a bit and I have inked on the back and I do want some texture and I'm not really sure if I'm going to use Mod Podge and because even though I'm using matte Mod Podge it, it does uh, make the paper really glossy and I, I'm not really into that for this project so I'll probably just use the back of my scissors and I'm going to curl my paper <coughs> I'm going to do that for this one as well. Same on this side. You have to excuse uh, the condition of my nails. I had them done but during the process of making this project I have they've seen hell okay so basically I'm just doing that to all of my four corners I'm gonna do that to this piece and uh, so I'm probably doing it to this part and this is just breaking the fibers of the paper Well, it knows it has to curl and I did ink the edges 
just so um, it looked pretty when you see the other part of it as well. So that's done and now I want to add a few holes on my paper and I haven't really given it much thought but I'm probably going to start tearing it in a little bit. This is really good quality paper. So I'm just going to add a few tears. probably add another one here. So paper is really very, very good quality and it's sort of doesn't want to tear. one I probably won't be tearing it too too much um, probably maybe we can do one here So here's my book and uh, it seems to be doing pretty well on its own. So um, I think we'll just start gluing our pieces together and I'm just going to use my adhesive and I'm going to get a really really good amount on there. This book wasn't really very heavy but um, it still needs to cement with our box here. I'm just using the the base of the pages to create a, a landing space for the for the for our uh, the bottom piece. Just gonna make sure it's perfectly lined. Okay, and it is. see my um, little room box is nearly done I mean the structure is so um, I'm going to try to work out a, a good angle so that I don't get in the way of the view but I'm just going to ink my edges once more and I'm going to just take my glue very simply I'm just going to attach my book page and that's a lot of glue so I don't want it to be on there Okay. Probably 
we could have used more parch but like I said I don't really like the gloss too much so I want to make sure since it was cut exact uh, size of this book so it will go on there pretty easily I want to get off the excess sorry for turning it away but I really want to make sure I'm getting it all on there So um, now for the wallpaper and one final go with my distressing tool and this is on the left side so again I'm going to eliminate the curves that I've created I don't really want to glue them down but I want my edges to be stuck firmly so I'm gonna cover it with as much glue as I possibly can and there you go I'm just gonna turn it a little bit towards myself Like that in place. So you can see we have our wallpaper. I'm just making sure I don't have any air bubbles in there. Okay, on to this side now. So, um, we have our little door and I'm not really sure, um, but just in case, I would just like to ink this as well. It's always better to have more ink. instead of no ink anyways so there you go I'm going to just again add my glue to the wallpaper And you can see I'm excluding the door because I'm going to be adding another an actual miniature door to that so uh, you don't really need to glue that down so I'm just turning it making sure I don't have any air bubbles So um, I've done a few things off camera because the video was running really long. I've been editing it simultaneously as I'm shooting it. So the I've added these little frames and this is how they used to look. They were just uh, plain white resin frames and I just went over with some Inca gold and then when it was dry I 
uh, brush it off with a with a baby wipe and uh, it's uh, starting to look like a room now I added my door frame and I chopped off the excess um, pattern paper like I just need that much for my hinge for my door to go on and I'll be adding the um, I'll be adding the moldings and the moldings um, all I've done is I have taken some balsa wood and this is how it looks it's um, just a cubicle um, I don't know the exact term for this it's just uh, already pre-cut like this and it's really light wood that you can trim off with an exacto so uh, I'm just gonna lay it flat so probably or maybe that should be better so I've already um, trimmed it and here where I hope um, where it's going to touch the corner I angled it off at 45 degrees and this is how I want it to look so the balsa goes on the bottom of um, the floor so I'm just going to grab my glue and I have glue on two sides the bottom and the side that's gonna touch the wall and I want to really press it and make sure that there's full contact So this is a fairly quick drying glue so it should it should not uh, it doesn't need a lot of time to set and anyways I said I'll be fast with this but and I have a little bit of uh, chipboard lace um, I know exactly what it's called but it's just some die cut uh, laser cut um, laser cut chipboard and I'm going to use that on the top of the balsa so that goes up on there with some more glue and I just want to work fast what the molding is looking so far and I did go and paint um, these pieces with Inca as well now I have some little pieces to go on the sides of the door and I hope I can find them all So I've got some more pieces that need to go on this side and let's see so the piece that goes in the corner is also angled off I'm gonna again add my glue Love creating these kind of miniatures, scenes, room boxes. It's just a passion of mine. Love doing teeny tiny things. And this was an idea, uh, an old idea of mine, to recreate all my favorite fairy tales, scenes from all of my uh, favorite fairy tales. So Alice being the first one, 
that wouldn't fit so I'm probably gonna have to trim a little bit more so I'm gonna do that off camera and I'm gonna fit that in later let's just finish the other fit So once that's done, I've created a little door using, um, uh, this is a wood icon from the Tempetown collection if I'm not wrong, or either either the Garden Fable or Tempetown collection. I just went over with Inca on that as well. And I took another matching piece. Here I have cut uh, some car matching cardstock and distressed it and created like a wood panel. And this one I just left plain. Uh, this is going to go on the inside. So we're going to quickly add the door. And I think I'm going to do the rest of uh, the embellishing later. And just share the pictures. So, um, I think I'm going to start. I think I'll put the back panel first. So I'm just going to flip this over and add glue to the back of my hinge my leftover piece of cardstock and I'm just going to slide that in place it should fit and I'll that down make sure that it's moving And then I'm going to add some glue to the back of this little piece here and I'm just going to glue my door in place. So this is a door to the Royal Gardens. I don't want the door to be entirely shut. I'm going to be with little. Um, actually, in the story, it was shut. I haven't decided yet. I'm probably going to leave it a little ajar. Probably to show that she already went through and left the door open. So, so probably something like that. And all that le is left to do is to add the little glass table and um, I'll do that off camera and I'm going to share the pictures. So I hope you guys really enjoyed uh, this little project and uh, although the video took a really long time but the procedure is really simple. You can even use a notebook um, because uh, the steps that I've taken to um, make this room box you could actually use a notebook with a hardbound cover and nobody uh, nobody will know that it wasn't originally a book so you could like uh, like me you could add um, a scanned a printed out uh, book page to create that four book look and you can of course make them in different sizes different themes so I, I hope you enjoy this project and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for visiting. Bye bye.
सुखी के नौकरों के जो सलाखे हैं कहाँ जो खयालों 